Kia ora koutou, ke te whakarongo mai koutou ki uh, Isolation Blues. This is an occasional program to keep you company during lockdown with interesting and entertaining guests and, um, well, then there's me. My guest this afternoon is Georgia Jamison Ems, so let's welcome her on before I bore the pants off you. Although, at alert level four, pants are optional. There she is. <laughs> Kia ora. <laughs> Kia ora, Michael. <laughs> so there you are. And uh, as we all are, we're, we're either sitting on our homes or if we're essential like me, we're sitting in a lonely studio. I'm sitting in my son's bedroom. Oh, right. <laughs> I just realised that there, there's like a pig up on the shelf and some Lego behind me just to... Oh, Just so, to dress the set. Good, I'm glad. See, because you're a, you're a professional like that. This is a good segue into, I know these days you do a lot of directing and stuff, so dressing the set is part of the deal. <laughs> but you were an opera singer and still are, right? Yes, yep. I, it started as opera singing and then it sort of morphed into... <laughs> A whole bunch of other things, um, which is often the way. Yeah. Yep, I've seen you morphing on occasion. Um, <laughs> and uh, I loved, you did a version of Cosi Van, Van Tutti. That That's right. That was a hoot, kind of modern and a little bit different. Yeah. Thank you. That was, mm. that was like five years ago, Michael. I know, just the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like just the other day. We did that at Carterton at the event centre. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then since then, there's been a couple of other tours that have um, taken the, the same idea, you know, opera, mm. slightly fresh and quirky and silly and um, mm. and taken it around the country. So I've kept myself busy since you last saw me. Yeah. And I think, you know, during difficult times like these, artists have to be creative in ways of keeping the job going. Um, we also saw you down at your mum's house doing... <gasps> A solo play about yeah. um, Cole Porter's wife. Uh, what's her name? Right. Um, Linda. Linda. That's right. Linda uh, Lee Thomas. That's the one. Yes. And oh, yes. I, I didn't realise you were there. That's awesome. Well, you know, it is not the job of the audience to declare themselves. <laughs> oh, I really appreciate you coming, Michael. Oh, it was yes, great. that's right. We did... Um, yeah, that's, that show's been going a while as well because we just, um, every time I perform it, people respond to it. Just They're just amazing. They, they can't get enough of, well, the music for a start because mm. it's all Cole Porter. But there's this wonderful story as well about this woman who was kind of hiding in the shadows and yet without her, he may not have been the man that we know him to be. She was very so. understanding, we have to say that. She really was, but yeah. knowing, oh, so knowingly that, that understanding. She knew she knew what the deal was with Cole. Absolutely, and she I think was, they loved yeah, each other. Hundred percent. I mean, she was um, thirty six when they met, mm. um, and a divorcee, and she she knew a bit about the world. She was not some ingenue. She knew exactly what she was signing up for, and and she was you know ready to stand by him no matter what. I mean, it wasn't always easy for her, but. No. It's a cool story because it's a it's a twisted romance kind of it's a it's, it's, a, it's a, and an a different Im take on a love story. It involved elephants and acrobats from time to time too. Because man, <laughs> yeah, when they threw a party, into, yeah, how we got them into the room, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If there's not an elephant in the room, then make one. There you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> so isn't that funny? Here we are in the Wairarapa and we're discussing Cole Porter's wife. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. bring it on home. Here we are in alert level four. You're at yeah. home and you are being creative because you've been, I know uh -huh. we're looking back now to the previous lockdown a whole year ago, but you did a major number of kind of satirical spoof songs, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it was, honestly, it was wound up being the reason I got up in the morning. You yeah. know, you do <laughs> I, need one. And I had, I had a job to do. Mm. I, I created a job out of thin air, which was to just provide, you know, two or three minutes of satire um, at the piano. And it kind of just took off. And all of a sudden people were messaging and saying, 
I'm looking forward to you every yeah. single day and don't stop and you're the best thing, you know, about lockdown. You're getting us through. It was really like incredible the the impact it had when I thought I was just yeah. being a bit of an idiot. Um it, it, it's writing those songs. It raises an interesting question. Of course, during things like lockdown and artists, actors can't get out and do their job. And as that period just grows bigger and bigger and bigger, then their whole livelihood is threatened. And yet they're the very people that keep us going during these times. I know. I know the irony of that. Hey, it's crazy. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, we were so many of us were producing online content and yet the argument was still raging about whether or not the arts were relevant and whether money should be thrown at the arts, you know. Yep. It's just... Ah! <laughs> not just relevant, but you're an essential worker. Thank you. That's just... a really nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. I do think, I think there's something to be said for, for music soothing the soul mm. and... Honest, and, and the way that I approached it was as long as I kept it kind of light or as light as I could. I mean, let's be honest, there were yeah. ups and downs, um, but there was something about being able to sing that kind of made it easier. I mean, I was coping better if I had music in my life. And then as it turns out, so were all the people who were, who were watching me every day. I, it was, mm. you know helping them in some way too. I think perhaps our listeners and viewers are going, yeah, all very well to say that, but where's the evidence? So <laughs> this is where I attempt to get one of your clips up. Um, and this is from the, the Phantom of the Opera, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and it's a hoot because without giving too much of it away, uh, if the Phantom were out now in his mask, he wouldn't look that different <laughs> from the rest of us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he was so ahead of his time. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm going to play this uh, piece now, um, and you should probably mute your microphone because if you go, no, what are you doing? Put that down. Uh, you know, <laughs> it'll cut right through. I will. I'll mute myself. Okay. Right. Here we go. And I would like to dedicate this to Dr. Ashley Bloomfield. Dearest Dr. Bloomfield, just send us right hand. And that was interesting. She was just in the middle of singing that, and the connection went. Um, I'm going to have to phone her. Oh, that is so tantalizing. Uh, and annoying. I'm going to phone her now and we will continue this <laughs> on on phone. Wow. Uh, oh, it's a good song too. Um, but don't worry, I will play it a little bit later. Um, but we should we should talk to Georgia right now. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, that's great. It's causing interference. Never mind. There we go. Hello, Michael. Hi, Georgia. We're, we're still on air. You're, I'm just holding the <laughs> holding the phone up to the, uh, the microphone. Now, I can only think that somewhere underneath the desk, the power cord for... I don't know. It's still got a light on it. Anyway... Something went wrong. Um, That's all right. Yeah. It is what it is. It is. But this is live. This is the excitement of, of performing live, Michael. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, people say this to me all the time. Like, when you when you screw up on stage, mm. don't worry about it. Because the audience knows that you're real. Yeah. I'm, I, well, I'm taking it on your word that you are not some kind of... <laughs> hologrammatic uh, representation because you're stuck in your home you you've got technical wizardry at your fingertips <laughs> i wish all right well look let, let's continue now what is it your lockdown is creatively involved but you've also got the creativity of bringing up children how's that going during lockdown <laughs> um yeah um look it's not that easy i have the ages of my kids 
um, I've been told are ideal because my son is seven, mm. so his education is not severely impacted by being away from school. Um, keeping him amused is easier than the four-year-old who can't quite wrap her head around why we can't go to the park and why she can't see her friends. So there's that. Um, just trying to keep them busy. My husband is locked away in the guest bedroom um, yep. pretty much all day, every day. Um, I can tell you right now that he's working. I'm locked in my son's room and both of my children are watching TV because sometimes it's just how you got to get things done. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I wish I could be one of those parents who turns off the screens, but I'm just not. No, no, God, you can't be perfect. Now, the last time we went through lockdown, um, there was a lot of philosophical musings about what the experience is teaching us and whether we could bring that forward into into our normal lives once this is all finished. Do you, do you feel that there are things that, that uh, lockdown has given us that might be... Uh, the way we should move forward? I do, actually. I think um, for me in the last lockdown, which was much longer, Mm. um, not having to be anywhere by a certain time was quite a wonderful thing. Mm. Um, Because I'm a busy person who has many different projects on the go all the time, and I've got two kids, and they've got their dancing and their music and their sport. And I, I think I... Being forced to stay home and not just be looking at the clock, trying to get everyone's shoes on and get out the door to yeah. get somewhere, was it was amazing. And it made me think that that perhaps I should occasionally say no, yeah. um, which is a it's a very very difficult thing for a a freelancer to say no to anything. I know because there's a great fear that if you say no to something, no one will ever ask you again That's right. and then your work is going to dry up mm. um, so I've always I've always just said yes to everything all the time mm. and as a result I I find I spread myself a little too thin you know there's always something that suffers whether it's you know I'm not there to you know I wasn't there for my son's first day of school for example mm. you know there were moments that I missed because I was saying yes to work and I felt that huge pressure to say yes so after the last lockdown, I actually decided, hey, you know what, kids, we're going to take a break. You don't need to do swimming for the winter terms. We'll just do it in the summer terms. You'll be fine. And we're going to do your musical instruments within the school day rather than me rushing around after school with guitars in the back of the car. Um, saying no and just trying to not overcommit myself. That's what I learned from the last one. Good. Well, don't let it just sort of seep away because that's the danger, I think. You go, you know what, we've learned all this stuff and then you go, yeah, well, whatever. (laughs) And it's hard because for someone like myself, it's a different approach to living my life, you know. Mm. Looking at the calendar and saying, actually, I'm terribly sorry, I don't feel that I can commit to this. Um, that's, That's scary and horrible for me and... I'm always scared of letting people down, I think. There's that too. Mm. So, and, but amazingly, when I have said to people, I'm so sorry, I would love to work with you on this thing, I'm not going to be able to fit it into my schedule. They're always really nice about it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, we make a presumption, <laughs> don't we? Yeah. And, and some of them even come back a couple of months later and say, hey, we're doing this. Maybe now you can be involved. And I go, oh, actually, yes, I can be involved this time. So, yeah, my great fear of never being called again um, has yeah. come to fruition, which has been really nice. Maybe, you know, when they put the phone down, they talk to their producers and say, she's playing hardball, I think we've got her off yeah. her more money. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so I also wonder, you know, right, because because you wanted to do these spoofs, one of which I will, uh, will play a little later after we've sorted out what's wrong with the computer, Um mm. You had a commitment to do that, and it was kind of like, well, I've got to do it now. Do you find that that has helped you to um, looking into your future, thinking, you know what, I can I can write more stuff. I can do it. I can create things. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, I've always 
Um, you came and saw Cosy Fun Tuesday. Like yeah. that was that was the first time I kind of dabbled into that world of of writing lyrics. You mm. know, t- you know, translating from the uh, English, uh, sorry, Italian into English. Yeah. Um, so I've always kind of found that quite easy to like rewrite things, and I think the the lockdown thing was sort of an extension of that. But instead of you know rewriting Italian opera, I was just rewriting the you know, great musical theatre numbers of the time. And some weird things have kind of resulted from it all, you know, um, mm. th- that people have commissioned me to do things. Oh, um, they said, oh, you know, I, I hear that you, you can update texts or you can translate this into this or we want to put a New Zealand spin on this work yeah. or whatever. Mm. Um, and so that's been really exciting and cool and very unexpected. I, I don't think when I was training as an opera singer, I ever expected <laughs> I would wind up, no. you know, creating so much of so much of the work I do. I thought people were going to hire me to sing. And as it turns out, they're hiring me to write words and write funny songs. And Yeah, that's great. Um, it's, it's really, it's really, really cool. It's really fun. Yeah. Oh, neat. Well, um, I think we should probably say goodbye in a short while and then I will tackle whatever's run wrong with our gear because it's crucial. Tomorrow uh, we have, it's National Poetry Day and we have a two-hour Zoom program with many poets from all over the place contributing and if that happens, well, that'd be a pity. I'm not saying that you're a guinea pig. It's just as tragic that I cut you off mid warble, but you know. Mid warble. No, that's fine. I'm, you'll get you'll get me back. You'll get me back. It's fine. Yeah, great. Lovely to talk with you, and thanks very much. That's so nice to talk to you, Michael. Keep <laughs> being creative. Bye. Oh, well, thank you. Bye bye. Well, all right. So um, at least we still got to chat with Georgia, which is oh look, can you hear that? I'll just move my phone away. It doesn't like my phone. All right. That's it from this particular iteration of Isolation Blues. Uh, Don't forget the uh, National Poetry Day tomorrow, which is going to go smooth as silk. Honest. Bye.